Tonight, making a mess. Why superior residents are ticked off about taconite dust in their neighborhood. And battling COVID, how a national study being conducted in Duluth aims to better understand the virus. And voting safely in the battleground state of Michigan. The governor lays out plans for people to hit the polls in November. From CBS 3 Duluth, this is the CBS 3 News at 10. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. And I'm Anthony Matt. Thanks for joining us. If you drive through the Aloise neighborhood in Superior, you may notice the homes, garages, and cars are tinted a pink color. That tint comes from taconite dust drifting over from the BNSF facility right in their backyards. For the last 50 years, BNSF has refunded people money to clean their homes, but not anymore. CBS 3's Natalie Grant spoke with Aloise residents who say the reimbursements are still needed. Mary Ann Ross has lived in the Aloise neighborhood of Superior for 55 years. And I, I wash the house twice a year. 55 years of working to keep taconite dust from damaging her home. Mm -hmm. So when the wind comes, it blows it. And in the wintertime, our snow is black and then it turns red. The dust comes from the nearby BNSF facility. For the last 50 years, the railroad company has offered residents the option to file a claim and be reimbursed for their troubles. Now, without warning, they're rejecting those claims. This is something that people shouldn't have to live with, and the payments that they make make it a little more bearable. Wisconsin State Representative Nick Milroy is one of the several lawmakers who signed a letter to BNSF asking them to reconsider. Well, I know a lot of people buy power washers in this neighborhood to wash their houses and then they get reimbursed for that, but they can hire cleaning companies to come and clean their houses and it's just a, it's a small reimbursement for people to maintain their property. And even after things like power washing houses, you can see here that the taconized dust still lingers on these houses. A never-ending problem now without a helpful solution. But I can wipe it and it's right back. A neighborhood that will keep cleaning up and hoping for a change of heart from the railroad. A BNSF spokesperson says the company will continue to reimburse claims for more than two dozen property owners, but that's down from more than 200 properties. According to city officials, residents say BNSF has not made it clear which properties still qualify. Dave's here for a look at the weather. Dave's still chilly out there, and we got a little ways to go before a warm-up, huh? Yeah, another day before things start to moderate okay. and then warm up by the work week. This morning, though, frost on the pumpkin and the bayou, as I like to call our muskeg swamps here, made for a pretty picture here. John Dahlman, our dear friend from over towards Floodwood, sent us this shot of, indeed, a little white on the surface there as another frosty morning came to call, and another one's going to zap us tomorrow morning. Let's take a look at the upper Midwest. Cool high pressure continues to dominate our region, but an end to the chill is in sight. That low pressure system to the west will bring us our next rain chance, perhaps Sunday night. But in the meantime, it'll also help warm us up. So what are we looking at Friday? One last day of the chill. Low temps in the 30s or even 20s for some towns. High temp of 59 in the afternoon is still cooler than normal, but normal gets us for the weekend and warmer than normal comes by Monday. And we'll talk about the entire seven-day forecast to see how long it'll last in just a bit. Thanks, Dave. Party reps from both sides of the aisle are speaking out ahead of tomorrow's dueling presidential candidate visits. On the Republican side, 8th District Representative Pete Stauber spoke on President Trump's visit to Bemidji. He says the Obama-Biden administration was devastating for the region. Stauber says Biden has not come out in support of projects like the Enbridge Line 3 replacement or proposed copper nickel mining. That's unlike President Donald Trump. It was the uh, Obama-Biden administration that made the statement that these uh, mining and manufacturing jobs are going away and they're not coming back. And it took this president to, to say no to those dangerous policies. On the Democratic side, Duluth Mayor Emily Larson discussed Joe Biden's visit to the city. According to Larson, Biden spent his career supporting working families and kids while Trump exploited them. She says Biden knows how important this region is to the election because he's been here many times and knows it reflects his values. Uh, but it's also a chance for him to re-engage with us uh, as it relates to the economy and job creation and, and the coronavirus and the absolute disastrous national response that we've had to this pandemic. 
Larson added, voting is everyone's civic opportunity and responsibility. Speaking of, early voting starts tomorrow in Minnesota. It runs through November 2nd, just one day before the election. You have a few different options when it comes to casting your ballot during the pandemic. The city of Duluth is encouraging people to vote by mail. You can do that by requesting an absentee ballot. So far, city officials say they've received 15,000 requests, which is a record amount. The city will start mailing those ballots out tomorrow. And starting tomorrow, you can also vote early in person at City Hall or at your precinct on Election Day. Duluth's city clerk says no matter how you vote, it will be safe. Vote from home is certainly the safest way that you can uh, vote, but you can also come in at, in person to Duluth City Hall. We'll be open 8 to 1 Monday through Friday, and you can cast your ballot in person here, um, or you can go to your polling location on Election Day, and we've implemented a number of health and safety measures to ensure that folks can do that safely. If you do vote by mail, you're asked to make sure your ballot is postmarked by October 26th. But Duluth City Clerk says any ballots postmarked on or before November 3rd will be accepted until the close of business on November 10th. Voters can also deliver their absentee ballot to Duluth City Hall. There's also a way to see if your ballot has been counted yet. We have a link to that on our website. Meanwhile, Michigan's Governor Gretchen Whitmer is urging residents to vote and learn how to do it safely. Michigan is widely considered a battleground state in this year's election. Right now, Michigan citizens can register to vote and request an absentee ballot online, can vote early at their clerk's office and in person at the polls. Just like fighting this pandemic, democracy is a team sport, and we all have a part to play this fall. So no matter who you're voting Right now, Michigan citizens can register to vote and request an absentee ballot online. They can vote early and in person at the polls. People statewide are asked to mask up to prevent a resurgence of the coronavirus. Vice President Mike Pence will be back in the upper Midwest next week. Pence will start next Thursday at a manufacturing company in Eau Claire. Then he'll head to Minneapolis to meet with a pro-Trump law enforcement group. Wisconsin U.S. Senator Ron Johnson is in quarantine tonight after being exposed to someone who's tested positive for coronavirus. The Republican announced today that while he has no symptoms and has tested negative, he canceled plans to travel with the president to his rally in Mosinee this evening. Senator Johnson will remain in quarantine until September 29th. The man injured in an officer-involved shooting in downtown Duluth has hired an attorney. Police responded to several 911 calls Saturday night about a possible domestic assault at an apartment. When police arrived, officers said they heard two gunshots and a witness reported hearing a loud noise from inside. BCA officials say at some point, Officer Tyler Liebfried fired his gun into the apartment door. He hit 23-year-old Jared File in the shoulder. File was taken to the hospital and eventually arrested, but police announced the next day he would not be charged. The BCA reports no shots were fired inside the apartment. In a statement today, File's attorney said his client is fortunate to be alive and he's focused on recovering. The attorney said File hopes this incident will further the conversation on what he called appropriate police response, training and reform. File's attorney said he would not comment on if they're going to file a lawsuit. Officer Liebfried has been with the Duluth Police Department for five years. He's on standard administrative leave while the BCA investigates. St. Luke's Hospital is one of six organizations across the nation participating in a CDC-funded COVID-19 study. The study's goal is to learn more about the virus, whether you can get the virus more than once, or if antibodies can prevent you from getting sick. Participants will take a COVID-19 test weekly and blood draws throughout the survey. Dr. Harmony Tyner says these results could also help medical professionals learn about vaccine development. It feels like we're doing something here in our town that's going to make a difference for the entire world. It feels like a, a thing much bigger than us. Healthcare workers are the main focus of the study as they have the most contact with COVID-19 patients. The CDC's criteria also requires participants' medical records. Minnesota's grouse hunting season starts this weekend and this year is expected to be a good one. According to the DNR, dry and warm conditions are good for the grouse population. That's because their nests are likely uh, less likely to wash away. This year in northeastern Minnesota, we have seen a very dry spring and summer. Charlotte Roy is a grouse expert with the DNR. She says if you are interested in grouse hunting, it's good exercise and relatively inexpensive. 
First, they need to get a small game hunting license and and then be ready to, to walk a long, long distance so that you can flush birds. It helps to have a dog, but you re- need, really need very little equipment to get out there and, and try grouse hunting. In Wisconsin, the rough grouse season started on September 12th in the northern part of the state and October 17th in the southern part. Wisconsin's wolf population grew by quite a bit last year. According to the state DNR, the number of wolves is up 13 percent compared to last year, with their survey estimating the population at around 1,200 Wisconsin wolves. Protections for the species has led to a surge in their numbers, with the Wisconsin population at less than 100 just 20 years ago. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, many in Superior are grieving the loss of Mark Locke. Tonight we hear from his children and learn about his impact on the community. Duluth Airport record low temperature for the state is 28 degrees from 1959, and a lot of towns in Lynn meet or exceeded that. It's going to be chilly again tomorrow, but it could be the last day of this cold snap. We'll talk about a warm spell that'll replace it coming up right after our break. Watch Dave, Caitlin, and Austin for local weather you can trust on CBS. Our current president has failed. He's failed to protect us. He's failed to protect America. As president, I'll make you a promise. I'll protect America without exception every time. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Because of this, we built the most powerful Ford Explorer ever. Because of this, we built Ford Expedition with best-in-class towing. Because of this, we built Escape with Ford Copilot 360. And because Ford SUVs are built for this, you made Ford America's best-selling brand. Now get over 4,500 total cash on Escape. That's over 4,500 total cash. Only at your local Northland Ford dealer. I'm Sean Mullen, a physician assistant at St. Luke's Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. I first became interested in orthopedics from my own injuries and high school sports. I became fascinated with the way the body recovers and heals. You only get one body, so if you take care of it well, that will pay dividends for you down the road. Taking a patient who is in a bad place from an injury or a condition, knowing that you're a part of their care and helping to increase their quality of life is one of my favorite things about working here. We need to make things here in America. We rely on other countries for too many things. I'm Tina Smith, and I have a plan to rebuild American manufacturing, to strengthen our economy and grow the middle class. It starts with building a medical supply chain, so we're not relying on other countries for the medicine we need. I approve this message because instead of talking about making things in America, I've got a plan to do it. New Duluth Auto is the Duluth used car dealer. We have plenty of makes and models to choose from. Nissan, Honda, Toyota, and we even carry multiple options for our most popular vehicle, the Subaru Forester. Large cargo space, all-wheel drive, what's not to love? All of our vehicles are priced under $20,000. To make these deals even sweeter, there is a one-to-five-year warranty included on all vehicles. Give us a call, stop by, or view our inventory online at newduluthauto.net. Because here at New Duluth Auto, we are your Duluth used car dealer. We can't deal with an economic crisis until you beat the pandemic. You can't have an economic comeback when almost a thousand Americans die each day from COVID. Mr. President, do your job. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by Lulich Implement. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth Weathermax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. We'll start here with a picture from our dear friend Anna Martin O'Mara to come in from the Ulu area. Sunset over Ulu. Not too many clouds in the sky, and that's a sign that it's going to get cold once again. Higher pressure from the north took over a couple of days ago. We've had three mornings or two mornings in a row that have been pretty nippy with freeze warnings and frost advisories. We get it again tomorrow. One last time, though, at least for a week. Then things will start to warm up. But tonight, it'll still cool down. Freeze warning covers inland parts of northern Minnesota and parts of northern Wisconsin from Ashland over towards the Upper Peninsula. And in between, North Shore, head of the lakes, including Douglas County, well, we're getting a frost advisory. So it'll be a tough night for the gardeners, just in case there's anything left alive in your garden. Temperatures, we'll talk about the highs here today. They were cooler than normal, just like the morning lows, only in the 50s. We're supposed to be around 65, but... Tomorrow, well, 
probably temperatures like this into the 50s once again. But we get 60s for the weekend, and then 70s come around for Monday. And in just a bit, I'll talk about how long that dares to last in September. Right now, we have 39 at the airport in Duluth. 70% is the relative humidity, so that's really gone up as temperatures have gone down and gotten closer to the dew point. North winds hitting us 5 miles per hour. Air pressure's pretty high at 30.37 inches of mercury. Okay, now we take a look at the Doppler map for the area. And despite the higher pressure at the surface, it's an age-old story. Lower pressure well, can't uh, push it out of the way, so it has to go up and over. And that's why we have at least a little bit of cloud cover out there. And we've had a few showers trying to pop up as that's been lifted aloft. But precious little of that has even reached the ground in the form of sprinkles. So it's going to be clearish and pretty cool by tomorrow morning. Now, we cast our eyes once again towards the eastern coast of the United States and the remnants of Tropical Storm Sally here now are moving into the ocean rather rapidly and maybe even getting into the ocean, the Atlantic, earlier than expected tomorrow and of course allowing the Gulf Coast then and the eastern seaboard to clean up a little bit because they did get plenty of rain. We could use plenty of rain, maybe not six to eight inches a day like the Tropical Storm, but Oh, we need some because it's almost drought-like conditions out there. But with the cool blocking high in place, we're not getting it tonight or tomorrow or Saturday or even most of Sunday. Finally, by Sunday night, this low pressure system could bring us a chance for sprinkles in through Monday morning. But it will also bring us a better chance of a warm-up. So 60s for the weekend after 50s here tomorrow and then 70s by Monday for a couple of days. So I'll show you those days now with our seven-day forecast. And tonight in Minnesota, it's one of the cold ones. Low temps going anywhere from the 20s inland to the upper 30s, perhaps right by the lake. Wisconsin and Michigan low temps there should go from the upper 20s and the upper peninsula to maybe the mid-30s if you push it just a bit around Superior and Oliver. Now, tomorrow for Wisconsin and the UP, your daytime highs should hit 55 to 60. 5 to 10 degrees cooler than normal, but with sunshine, so it'll be a pretty day. Minnesotans get the beauty as well with 55 to 60 by the lake and uh, perhaps 58 to 61 a little bit farther inland. Temperatures warming up. Yeah, there you go. Saturday, 64. Sunday, 68 degrees with that late shower chance that lasts through Monday morning. Also on Monday, though, we hit 70. And Tuesday with sunshine, we could hit 75. The 70s just might last, Tony, through Wednesday before... We go back to the 60s by next Thursday. Summer just keeps hanging on barely, huh? Well, and technically, of course, for a little while longer, it is summer. That's very true. Mm -hmm. A couple more days. Thanks, Dave. Family and friends are remembering the life and legacy of Mark Locke, a superior man who died last week in a tragic accident. CBS 3's Kendall Jarbo spoke with his children and shares the lasting impact their father had on the community. Mark Locke, carpenter and general contractor, cared deeply about his community. He, he was a people person. He enjoyed, absolutely loved, had a passion for helping people. He gets to know the families and becomes like lifelong friends with them. Locke dedicated countless hours to helping churches, schools, and friends. From preserving the Carnegie Library to painting lines on Spartan fields, Locke always stepped up to help. He drove down the street and seen anyone needing help, he would stop and help them. In a tragic accident, Locke died after falling off scaffolding while working on a project. His family still coping with the sudden loss. It's hard, and we're not going to lie. This has been very difficult. Anybody? It was sudden, and it was tragic. We weren't ready for it. No. I mean, he exercised every day. He ate well every day. To offset medical bills, Locke's son started a GoFundMe, which led to something the family wasn't expecting. There, there are stories that people are putting on there that we didn't even know because he didn't even tell us. They just, that's the way he was. He helped people and didn't want any recognition for it. Though he died unexpectedly, his family says Locke was ready. He wasn't afraid to meet God. Yeah, spiritually he was ready. Locke never wanted recognition, only to serve the people of Superior. He cared about everything, the environment, our community, the people in our community especially the people in the community he cared a lot for. A caring felt by many and not soon to be forgotten. Locke's memorial service happened this afternoon. If you want to donate to the family's GoFundMe, we have a link to do that on our website. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, Hurricane Sally has moved further inland, causing downpours. We have details about the damages after the break.
CBS3 live cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. Welcome to Medical Insight, a weekly health care feature brought to you by the experts at Essentia Health. Here's your host, Louis St. George. Today on Medical Insight, Essentia Health physical therapist Ron Winans tells us how the Spinex Rehabilitation Program is helping patients restore neck and back strength. We uh, incorporate some strength and conditioning, cardiovascular, stretching, home program, and uh, a routine here in, in the physical therapy department. We're here also to help decrease their fear, return to their activities recreationally, work, home, yard work, anything they need. We cater their program to themselves. So someone comes in with back and neck pain, it is a head-to-toe project. We do uh, initial evaluation. We find out where they're at, not where they should be at for height, weight, age, female or male. We find out where they're at. If you're six foot five, 350 pounds, that's who you need to be strong enough for. So we gotta find out where you're at. 80% of sports injuries are training errors. So we have to find out what's their flexibility, range of motion, and then progress there. The Spinex program is two days a week for six to eight weeks. Winan says a successful outcome is when patients can increase their activity without fear. We're here to re-educate the back and neck, increase their range of motion flexibility. Once we have that, then we can start building on the strengthening component. So it is, again, tailored to the individual, and obviously as they build confidence and decrease fear to their routine to activities, I want to hear that they can do stuff they hadn't been able to do and that's what we typically see. In the last 11 to 12 years, we've seen close to 2,500 patients with an 80% successful rate. For Medical Insight, I'm Louis St. George. This Medical Insight was brought to you by Essentia Health. To learn more about the services we offer, visit EssentiaHealth.org. Uh-oh. What? I think I forgot to lock my Buick. Parallel parking. The hot yoga was so hot. Check this out. Cooling seats? Alexa, ask Buick to start my SUV. You can do that. You can do that? You can't do that. You can with the Buick. At the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Get great offers across the full Buick lineup, like nearly 4,300 purchase allowance on most 2020 Buick Encore models. Visit your Lake Country Buick dealer. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS3 Live at 5 on live, local, CBS3. Get your new John Deere mower from Duluth Lawn and Sports, the region's largest power sports dealer. Coming up Friday on CBS3 this morning, both President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden will be campaigning here in the Northland. What to expect from each visit. And we have another chilly day on Friday as we start to warm through the weekend. I'll have that outlook. So wake up with us. Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS3. The remnants of Hurricane Sally are trekking inland, bringing heavy downpours across the south. The storm hit as a Category 2 on Wednesday, battering the Gulf Coast of Alabama and the Florida Panhandle. At least two people were killed. Here's the devastation Hurricane Sally brought to the Gulf Coast with its 105 mile per hour winds. The Category 2 storm turned roads into rivers from Florida to Alabama, shredding homes and businesses. In Florida, the National Guard rescued hundreds of people stranded by floodwaters. Forecasters expect Sally to continue moving further north, bringing severe thunderstorms to the mid-Atlantic. Another system, Wilfred, is developing in the Gulf. Forecasters expect it to become a tropical depression or tropical storm later today. Coming up in sports, high school soccer begins in the state of Wisconsin. That and more is all coming up after the break. Watch Dave, Caitlin, and Austin for local weather you can trust on CBS. Right now, you can get 0% APR financing for 60 months on a new 2020 RAV4. Toyota, let's go places. When COVID struck, President Trump took action, cut off travel from China, the source of the virus. Joe Biden criticized, politicized, attacked President Trump's leadership. And what does Biden now propose while the pandemic still smolders around the globe? 
increasing refugees by 700% from the most unstable, vulnerable, dangerous parts of the world. America can't afford weak Joe Biden. Times like these call for real leadership. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. What are you thinking? Thinking about burger fries and some pie. You know it's 9 o'clock in the morning. Well, then bring the pie first. It's back and better than ever. Perkins Burger Fries and Pie Combo. For a limited time, enjoy any burger, fries, and a slice of pie. And always served safely. Whether you dine in, order online, or get it to go. Order now at PerkinsToGo.com. Because of this... We built Ford Super Duty to be the most capable heavy-duty pickup ever. Because of this, we built Ford F-150 with 375 horsepower. Because of this, we built Ford Ranger with a terrain management system. And because Ford trucks are built for this, you made Ford America's best-selling brand. Now lease an F-150 for just $299 a month. That's just $299 a month. Only at your local Northland Ford dealer. School's starting. Is your internet fast enough? Gear up during Extreme's End of the Summer Sale. Get fast internet as low as $19.99 a month for one year. Extreme's fiber-powered internet gets an A-plus for performance with speeds from 60 meg up to 1 gig, powerful in-home Wi-Fi, and 99.99% network reliability. Hurry and get Extreme internet for as low as $19.99 a month for a year. Dial 844-EXTREME2. It's the smart call. Built upon a solid foundation of cast iron and steel, the Kubota L-Series tractor is the number one selling compact tractor in the U.S. for over 10 years. Powerful Kubota diesel engine, ease of operation, and your choice of a dependable Kubota gear or HST transmission. The durable Kubota L-Series tractor. Talk to your local Kubota dealer today to schedule a demo. No one serves you better than Right now, you can get 0% APR financing for 60 months on a new 2020 RAV4. Toyota, let's go places. It all begins tonight for the Lynx. They start another playoff run. This time, it's down in Bradenton, Florida in the WNBA bubble. The Lynx with a single elimination game in the second round against the Phoenix Mercury. Phoenix up five in the third quarter, but Odyssey Sims makes... The great play. Man, she's been on fire all season. Lynx whittling away. She won Rookie of the Year today and proved why. Crystal Dangerfield cannot leave her open, folks. Lynx by one with less than three to go, and Sims will put this one away. Minnesota holds on for a one-point win. They now advance to the semifinals. And high school soccer teams in Minnesota have been playing since early September. But for Superior in the state of Wisconsin, the wait has been a bit longer. For the first time tonight, the Spartans took the field at NBC Sports Complex, taking on Duluth Denfeld. Both sides required to wear masks throughout the course of the game. The Hunters continuing their kneeling protest during the national anthem. Superior came out fast, but the Denfeld bro relentless pressure, or brought rather, Got the T on that after a handball in the box. Keegan Chasey capitalizes on the PK, and then the floodgates broke open. Simon Davidson finishes inside the near post on the breakaway. It's 2 0 Hunters. They just have so much speed on the outside. Davidson with it again. Tanner Swanson makes the initial save, but Davidson gets in for the last touch. The Hunters go on to dominate this one 9 1, the final. Up in two harbors, the Agates still in search of their first win as they hosted Grand Rapids. Early on, Thunderhawks with a chance on the corner kick, but goalkeeper Brendan Lempella leaps up and grabs the ball, denying Rapids from getting on the board. Grand Rapids would still keep battling. Ian Anderson gets set up perfectly out in front, tips it in for the score, and just like that, they lead by one. They weren't done because moments later, Nick Langlois makes a couple moves, then fires on net for the score. Grand Rapids goes on to get the shutout, 7-0 the final. And to girls soccer, Hermantown hosting Esco on their still beautiful brand new turf field. This game was gridlocked at one or zero apiece. That was thanks to the goaltending, specifically from Ori Randall, who denied the Hawks many, many chances in the first half. 
The Eskimos took that momentum and ran with it in the second. Ava Corby sneaks one past the goaltender late in the second half to finally put a goal on the board. Corby goes on to get the shutout, and the Eskimos get one more. 2-0, they win. And in cross country, Hermantown hosting a tri meet as they faced off against Superior and Esco. For the girls, Esco's Grace Robick would run away from the rest of the competition with a time of 21 minutes, 24 seconds. Then in the boys' race, Superior's Shane Lieske comes claims top honors, completing his race at 18 minutes, 49 seconds. As for team results, Hermantown girls and Superior boys would go on to take the top spots. And the Twins added again with the Chicago White Sox after getting a very much needed win yesterday to delay the White Sox getting a playoff berth. And here is something you don't see every day or maybe ever in the history of baseball. And it's a player getting kicked out of a game after hitting a home run. Josh Donaldson was mad about a questionable strike call. And in the same at bat, he slammed this solo shot. And as he came home, the bringer of rain, as they called him, brought dirt upon home plate, to put it nicely. Umpire Dan Bellino didn't like that. Donaldson actually went back for more and was promptly ejected from the game. Twins lost 4-3, to three, but I'll say, I said it once in the 6, I'll say it again. That's the kind of walk-off mic drop that I strive for in my daily life. That's going to do it for sports. We'll be right back after the break. CBS 3 Closed Captioning is brought to you by Essentia Health. Have our certified nurse midwives provide personal one-on-one -on -one support and guidance for your next pregnancy. Visit EssentiaHealth.org to learn more. What's behind the curtain? Window treatments from concept to creation to installation. Bellinger Drapery Shades and Blinds. Shades above the rest. We know it can be scary when you're injured in an accident. We know the insurance company can be unfair. We know bills need to be paid. But we also know what it takes to win. We know what it takes to get our clients compensated. And most importantly, we always fight to do the right thing for our community. Nicolay knows. Nicolay knows. Nicolay knows. Nicolay knows. Injury Law. Nicolay Law. Duluth and Superior's award-winning injury, disability, and bankruptcy law firm. So, you made it all the way up to the North Pole? Yep, and the South. But I need good Medicare coverage so I can keep exploring. Well, we have a range of Medicare Advantage plans, some including dental, vision, prescription, and travel benefits. Can I find them online? Yeah, absolutely. Or you can give us a call. Sounds good. Well, our stop is just up ahead. So that was the shortest ride I think I've ever been on. Yeah, quarantine legs. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta work those muscles back up. Let's face it, it's been a tough year. But here in Minnesota, we're pretty tough, too. We help each other, we work together, and we solve problems. That's what I try to do every day as your congressman, like helping to save pensions for our union workers, standing with snowplow drivers during their strike, and fighting to lower health care costs for seniors and our most vulnerable. I'm Pete Stauber, and I approve this message, because together, we're fighting for our way of life. Tune in Saturday mornings to the Link Ford lineup, where we will show you amazing vehicles on our lot, like this 2012 Ford F-150 XLT with a six and a half foot truck bed, a remote start, and more for just $302 a month. Or check out this 2017 Chevy Trax LT for only $249 a month. Want to see more? Then be sure to watch this Saturday. Visit us online at linkmotors.com or stop by to view our complete inventory. Link Ford, where reputation is everything. Synergy. To us, it's the definition of what's behind the curtain. Discover what we can create together. Bellinger Draperies, Shades and Blinds. Shades above the rest. Men's Wardrobe provided by Mainstream Fashions for Men. Your fall fashion headquarters with new arrivals daily. Downtown Duluth. With September winding down, many people are starting to think about October and even Halloween. Yeah, parents say they are worried about trick-or-treating and COVID-19. However, one man, hey, good news, he might have come up with a solution. He's calling it a candy shoot. Ah. Andrew Beatty shared this video of his creation. He made a six-foot-long shoot for materials around his house. On Halloween night, he said he will wear a mask and gloves to drop candy down the chute mm. for trick-or-treaters waiting on the other side. He hopes his creation will help keep trick-or-treating alive in blasted 2020. Yes, and 
That's going to be way more fun for the kids yeah. trick or treating. You got to catch the candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. my kind of game. And then one Reese's peanut butter cup sticks four feet into the tube, <laughs> and you can't reach it from either you side. Get your arms stuck. Yeah. Uh, oh, that'd that's be the my, next thing. Yeah. That'd be my luck. <laughs> Well, Dave, it's going to be cool overnight again. Yeah, one more round of frost advisories tomorrow morning, but then you see the rest of the week, we will moderate to a high of 75 by Tuesday. All right, thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow night.